everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Economist Podcast. We're in our year three and we're still going strong. As you know, I'm one of your hosts, as always, Barry 3D for Deep Earth Delicious. Hey, and on my side, as always, the one and only, the man, the myth, the legend, the one has got the tables rocking all night long. And if your feet stop dancing, it's because he signed off. What am I talking about? The one and only. DJ Rod C. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in, welcome in. <laughs> Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, all right. Get my Ric Flair out of there. No, Ric Flair. Let's do the flares. Do the flares. You know? <laughs> Limousine riding? No, I'm not. <laughs> this gas too expensive. I ain't got no budget. All right. So, once again, as I said, thank you to everyone for tuning into the Iconist podcast. And look, we got to do the round table. Manners make it the man. So, here's the breakdown of this. Uh, these are people that support the show, and we're happy they do, and we hope you support them in turn. Right? So, boom. Here we go. First, for anyone who wants to start a comic collection, add to your collection, or do anything along those lines, for our friends out in Kitchener, check out WoW Comics. Tell Wes and the rest of the guys we say hi. Now, if you want to go a little bit further, uh, or before, depending where you are, there's a, a new one there in Cambridge called uh, A Hero's Tale, and that's with Andrew. Tell the rest of the guys we said hi from the Iconist Podcast. For our friends out in Montreal, check out Check Swings on the South Shore. Tell Trevor and the rest of the guys we say hi. Great place to go and buy your books and any memorabilia you need. All right, mm. on that, another friend of the show, Miss Brandy Ford. You can check her out at 4680q.com. She's on there three times a week, Mondays and Wednesdays at 2 o'clock and uh, Saturdays at noon, all right? And, of course, if you want to see where I'm going to be or any information about this show, check out barry3d.com. That's my website with all the links to my social media you know just favorite you can't go wrong there either right uh and then of course sometimes i'm doing comedy i'm with my comedy troupe and that's a touch of gray matter that's me zolf ali and dave sakalowski please and right now he's doing a fundraiser collecting clothes for the homeless uh you'll see the ad right here if you can help help out please help out uh you know the temperatures are getting colder and there's people out there that are not doing so well dave does this every year so don't be surprised he's doing it again with the widow's son so thank you for your service sir Mm. On top of that, um, well, it's very simple. Uh, I'm, I'm here with my, my cousin Ron, and uh, Ron, where mm. can we find you? Yeah, you can find me on the world wide web, as I always say. You can find me on the world of uh, Instagram, you can find me at Mr. Rod C. You can find me in the world of twitch.tv forward slash DJ Rod C. Find me on TikTok at DJ Rod C1. That's DJ Rod C1, the number. Exactly. And before we go off, we got to kick off. If you want to do a podcast, remember, anyone can mm. do it. Don't let the imagination limit you or friends tell you you can't do something because you can do it. Believe in yourself, right? Mm. You're your star player, as Cat Williams would say. If you want to do that, we use Podbean. If you want to find it, our, we are on iconist.podbean.com and it's open to everyone if you want to start a podcast. And if you are starting a podcast, regardless of where you are in the world, Reach out to our friend because you're going to need a graphic artist. And we have one here right here for you. And if you mention you heard about him on the Iconist podcast, he will give you a discount on the work. God, who are we talking about? Jay Bird Digital Art. Art, art, art. Mr. Jason <laughs> Reese, Jay Bird Digital Art. Hit him up worldwide. Say you heard about the Iconist podcast. He'll give you a discount on any work you need, graphic work. And I said it can be digital or it can be anything that you can print off and uh, for yourself. All right. Holidays are coming up. Make a wacky mm. card. Okay. Awesome. So now we're done with that. We're getting right into the show. Mm. Oh, and we got to, I'm going to do a special shout out to my man, uh, Larry, Larry from the uh, Forgotten Heroes and Obsc Forgotten Obscure and Underrated Heroes fan page. You know, I mean, Facebook page. Great page. If you can get on there, get on there, people. You're missing out. This is what we talk about. Let's go. All right. I think we got it. So on the Iconist podcast, Rod, the icon is <laughs> the abomination. <sighs> right. The abomination from Marvel Comics. Sometimes you got to go bad to get good to get bad again. Mm. Ooh, that's nice. Sounds nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what that's the whole thing about the anti-hero. Okay, and this is what we're talking about. So we're going to talk about the abomination. Now you're going to say, "Well, Barry, the abomination's already been cast and done in the MCU," and I'm going yeah. to say, "Yes, fish. He has been done in the MCU. He has been cast. I like the actor that plays him, but they changed his backstory a little bit." And yeah. So we're going to get into the comic book, ver comic book version of the abomination. So uh, here we go. 
first and foremost, uh, the abomination made his first appearance in Tales to Astonish, issue number 90, back in April of 1967. Woo! That's right? Like, it's stand the test of time. So mm -hmm. that's when he made his first appearance. Tales of Astonish, issue number 90. And he came out and he was created by Stan Lee and Gil Payne. These were the two mm -hmm. people behind him. Now, how did his character really come to be? Well, Stan Lee was, you know, Tales of the Astonish was working on the whole Hulk series at this point. It wasn't officially the Hulk, the Incredible Hulk title. It was in Tales to Astonish. A lot of the heroes that you see today on TV, cartoon, movies, started off in Tales to Astonish, Tales of Suspense by Marvel. They didn't have their own titles originally. That is including, of course, the Hulk, Thor, um, I think Spider-Man no, Spider made his... Uh, Spider-Man was too. in there. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man was in there too before he had his own Spider-Man. You know, that's that iconic cover where he's swinging and holding someone underneath his arm at the same time. You know, you know so a lot of... the, the And this is from way back then. So they started off there, little kind of piece, got popular, finally gave him their own books. So this is mm -hmm. what was going on at the time. With that being said, Stan Lee wanted to turn around. And of course, there you have the Hulk. But the Hulk is kind of boring if he has nobody to fight, right? A villain has uh, is a boring person if he has no one to, you know, fight him and he has to be smart or beat. So they had to always come up with new characters. Of course, back in 1967, they're working on his rogues gallery. Now, I don't know if the word rogues was ever associated with Marvel. It seems DC has the term rogues. I saw that in the forgotten, sure. obscure, underrated uh, Facebook page today when someone put that question up. And I was like, oh, wow. Wow, that's a good one. Uh, and we, I, I don't know. So he needed villains. The Hulk needs villains. Mm -hmm. Got to fight somebody. You got all this power. What are you going to do? So Shay, I say nay. Yeah, yeah. Too big yeah. hands. I don't think he could do it. The hands are too big. The hands are too big. Yeah. So Stan Lee turned around and his idea was he came up with the whole backstory of the character for the Abomination. Had the look pretty much of the Abomination, uh, but didn't have a name. And, you know, he was looking around and said, oh, well, we're going to call the character The Abomination. Because he realized that nobody in comics before at that point had ever used that name. It wasn't attached to anybody. Hey, we, we can use it on this character. And the whole idea was make him bigger and stronger than the Hulk. To really make that catalyst go. Okay. Right? That makes that. sense. It was like when Hulk Hogan first came in and he had to fight Andre the Giant. You had to overcome this big mountain to show how big you were as a person. Yes, that was a, you know... WrestleMania three reference, I believe that was. Okay, there we go. So with that <laughs> happening, that was a whole thing. So the, the, now the backstory of the character, I think is really interesting. And that's mm. where the MCU kind of diverged from. Like the MCU and Marvel Comics, they start down a similar path, but then one kind of goes a little bit left, the other one goes a little bit right. And then there's a, a gap that forms because they keep writing stories from that perspective. So we know in the in the MCU, he's a soldier, he's on loan, he's with the, you know, to go after the Hulk. Okay, you know, when it was Edward Norton playing the Hulk, got it. But in the comic book, uh -huh. Uh -huh. He, was a, uh -huh. he was a KGB spy slash soldier that was sent over to infiltrate Gamma Base where the Hulk was at because a lot of experiments were happening. You know, Russia wants to know what's happening on that side of the world. So they would send their agents. I mean, spies are everywhere. Everyone's always intrigued by the spy world. And he turns around, he gets a an, an officer uniform, he gets on base, and he starts kind of poking around. First, he's trying to figure out what's going on. And then when Thunderbolt Ross, who was the head of that base, Gamma Base at the time, and, you know, Thunderbolt Ross... You know, Betty Ross's father did not know that Bruce Banner and the Hulk were the same person. Mm -hmm. They thought he was a monster. So when the Hulk first got came out, he was gray. That was that was more of a culling error. He was supposed to be green. They made him gray, and they just kind of stuck with it. All right, and then later on, he, he changed him to green. Or okay, when he first came out, he would only change when it was nighttime, almost like a werewolf kind of thing. Then, of course, they changed it to anger, adrenaline, change, you know, rush of emotions. That's when he became the Hulk. So in issue 90, they're still trying to figure out, find machines, trying to stop them. Bruce Banner is, he's had enough. He, uh -huh. he's, he's, and now this is to show you how deep the book was back in 1997 with being named. 
mental health. We know mental health has been on the horizon and on the forefront and named properly over the past few years. But back in 1967, it was never properly widely known. You would never hear the term mental health in 1967. Here in 2023, borderline 2024, we hear it. We know it. It's now recognized by a lot of companies, recognized by a lot of employers, recognized by you know the medical industry. It's it's there now. It's, it's you know, and I'm making an emphasis on this because one, if you're going through these moments, please reach out, talk to somebody. Yeah. You know, don't do anything drastic. There's always a tomorrow, and tomorrow will get better. Right? Just open your eyes. You can do better. Now, the reason I'm going hard on this is because that's what Bruce Banner was going through. He was having a mental break. So picture what happens with him. Bruce Banner is the Incredible Hulk, right? Turns yeah. into, you know, I mean, it's Bruce Banner. He's, you know, it's Bruce Banner. He turns into the Hulk. When he turns into the Hulk, different personality, different set of memories. He doesn't remember what the Hulk does. The Hulk is a very angry, lashing out character, destruction. And it's not to say that Bruce sees the destruction that he that when he becomes the Hulk, because it's, for him, it's always very foggy. It's always people telling him what he's done. Right. It, you know, you black out and then you wake up and then people are like, oh my gosh. And you believe it's almost like the gossip mill. It's like, look at all the damage you did. You know, the Hulk did. <laughs> all right. They don't realize they're talking to the person that to turns the person into the Hulk. Created. Yeah. Yeah. Created, turned in. He carries that guilt. He carries that weight. He carries all that pressure. So he's sitting there like he doesn't want to hurt nobody. He's Dr. Robert David Bruce, you know, Dr. Robert Banner, right? Dr. Robert David Banner. That's his full name, Bruce Banner. He's he's a doctor. He's not out to hurt nobody. He made the gamma bomb. He was a scientist. Uh, okay. It was like Oppenheimer. Right. He, he did something because it was there. He wasn't doing it to hurt anybody it was used that way maybe he was a little naive at the moment but bruce is in that level mm -hmm. he's right there if you watch oppenheimer then you can copy paste bruce banner change you know uh atom bomb or nuclear bomb to gamma we're good like that's it don't know if you know if that was an influence or not for bruce banner's character but just afterthought so he's got that guilt and when he's got that guilt, the first thing he wants to do at, at this point, it's been going on for so long. He can't he can't love the woman he wants to love because he's afraid to change and hurt her. He's hurting random strangers or according to what he's being told. You're being chased by the military because they want to destroy you because you're a, you're a monster. And then at the same time, you got to carry that and you have nobody to talk to. He doesn't talk to Betty. You know, he, he, the only person that someone knows at points is Rick Jones. But I mean, that's that's, you know. And I think that Rick Jones really is underrated for saving Bruce Banner's mentality a lot of times. So anyways, the reason I'm getting into this really deep is because in issue 90, Bruce Banner says, that's it. I'm done. I've made this machine. It's going to give me an extra added exposure of gamma radiation so I can kill myself. That That's just wanted to set that frame of mind up. And I'm like, Whoa. in 1967, it's heavy, right? Like that's wow. And in doing so, he had the machine set up. Now, behind the scenes, you know, the the person becomes the abomination. So that's uh, uh, Emil Blonsky. So Emil Blonsky is there as a KGB spy in the facility. He's walking around. He's taking pictures. Thunderbolt Ross is kind of saying, "Hey, I don't know who you are. I don't see you before." So before his 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 identity was blown. He was trying to sabotage certain things at Gamma Base. When Thunderbolt Ross, General Thunderbolt Ross, put on to him, he's like, okay, I got to get out of here before my cover is blown. So he went into the room, started taking pictures of all the equipment. You know, if you watch old school James Bond movies, you know it was microfilm. <laughs> and, and that's what he's doing the whole time, taking pictures, taking pictures, to bring back to his, his the leaders, right? The KGB, his boss, his handler in Russia. Um, he hears some footsteps coming in. He's like, oh, geez. He goes and hides, thinking maybe it's security, maybe it's the general. And sure enough, it's Bruce Banner. Bruce Banner set up the panel on the floor when he was using like a foot switch to operate it. So he's going to step on this button, 
right? Security comes in there and they stop Bruce Banner um, from killing himself. They they remove him. Now, nobody knows why he wants to take those drastic measures. I explained that to you, but remember, nobody else knows. Sure enough, MLC is in and goes, huh, what's this button do? And he <laughs> steps on it, bombards himself with more radiation than the Hulk had originally, which explains why he got bigger and stronger and then turns into this giant, scaly-looking monster. Wow. But unlike Bruce Banner, it's all Emma. He doesn't change personality. He doesn't black out. He stole, it's his mind, in this body full of power. Right. With all his training and knowledge. Hot dog. Rod, what what do you think of it? Yeah, I know. Here I go again, eh? It's okay. It's all good. <laughs> This is making me think of a Mickey Mouse. That's all I was there. Hot dog. Anyways, we'll stop right there. <laughs> Trust me. Side note, I thought that like last week and I had it in my head for like a full day. Hilarious. Hot dog. Now I'm doing that for the rest of the day. Anyways, so what I thought about a star. <laughs> oh my goodness. So listen, what I thought about Tales to Astonish uh this episode, it was definitely a great way of seeing the mindset of what Stanley. And Lee and Kane were doing back in the days of what how they started off, giving us, like you said, giving us a, a feedable foe to the Hulk. And as Stan Lee said, I take the name abomination. Don't know exactly what I'm doing with it yet, but just give me someone who's bigger, stronger. So you don't sound like a six million dollar man. We can rebuild him. Bigger, stronger, faster. So, okay, we got the abomination. So I do like the fact that the one criteria in the early days of the Hulk is that when you change, you lose your personality. Great thing about this, it shows that, hey, more gamma gamma radiation now leads you to actually have some type of control. Hmm. I'll put a pause on that because I have a a 30-second thought process on that later on. We'll come back to She-Hulk. We'll pause right there. Hmm. But that's how I look at it in regards to this episode. I mean, introducing this character in that particular way is showing us the mind that out in those days, he is trying to infiltrate. He's trying to bring down and do something good for his government. I'm an undercover uh, espionage agent. I'm here to do my craft and barely nearly getting caught and realize for a way for him to get more seekers in return, hey, if that guy, if that doctor was trying to do something with this, I'll take back the pictures I have, and, the, you know, and I'll be I'll be a guinea pig for my country, taking a hit for the team. And sure enough, he took a good gamma hit and made him into something extra special. Go, Lonsky, go. <laughs> So that's what he did, and 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 it's smart because I said he had his loyalty to you know this is the Cold War at this time that's going on during that period of time, right in history. Marvel, you know, always based their stuff during real world real world events, mm-hmm. time places. And they always incorporate a lot of that. That makes it a lot more tangible than the DC universe. And I'm not saying that as a slight to the DC universe. It's just it's how they write. That's how they you know the difference is. Like as I said, try to find Gotham City. All right, keep looking. You know, I, I did this. If you look online, the Earth, the DC Earth, and the Marvel Earth are two different sizes. The DC Earth is actually bigger than the Marvel Earth. Marvel Earth is our Earth, right? Got it. No matter what universe you're in, it's still, you know, New York is going to be New York. You know, uh, Dubai is Dubai. Barbados is still Barbados. But uh. in the in the DC universe, you know, if you want to know where Gotham and Metropolis are, they're, they're they're around where Maine is. If you think Maine, Stephen King, Bangor, that's they're they're a couple of hours away from them in either direction. That Maine, if you look on a map, that's how someone mapped it out. I was like, wow. So their Earth is bigger because it has to have more cities on there, right? It's got right. those cities that we know, and then the ones they've created. So keep on keep on target, stay <laughs> on target with Emma. I thought that was interesting. So, you know, what I found interesting is one, he's a spy with the KGB, mm-hmm. which means, sure, we hear the name in a fictional universe, you're like, ah, but if you want to make it realistic, 
that man has a certain set of skills that are applied in situations which they did show but it, now when you read back at it you you think more about it you're like wow okay so physically he's trained as a soldier mm -hmm. he's gone to school to learn multiple languages because he's made for infiltration he so he has to learn obviously he's learning about russian history and culture because that's where he's born and raised he was born in what we know as yugoslavia and then uh, and, and you know, and then uh, he comes over here to America. So that means he had to work with a linguistist to make sure that when he speaks English, he speaks it with an American accent and not a Russian speaking English. Okay, he was mm -hmm. military trained, trained in espionage, trained in uh, small weapons. He has a uh, sniper training on top of that. Uh, okay, I, it, it just I know it, it just adds to that picture the, the skill Lord. set of james bond without the gadgets james bond military so he he can you know he's in uh, the the royal navy this man's kgb so he knows interrogation manipulation uh psychology because he has to know how to understand and read people in certain situations he has to manipulate people to kind of do their things blackmailing techniques and he's got so he's not just a guy in a gun running going oh, i'm the abomination or you know hulk smash abomination fight no he's not that he he, he's, he's calculating yeah he, he, he has he has a mind he knows what he's doing that's the that's the that's what i'm saying i like about it that those are the early stages of integrating someone with the power of the hulk and it's basically the 180 what if someone had the power of the hulk but was able to control it and have and make sense of what they're doing this is what Blonsky is. Perfectly. And that's the so birth of it. There. He's perfect. Like as a, a main villain for the Hulk. So where they always say the Hulk is dumb, or you know, and later on you figure he's got like a, the the mindset of a, a, a young child, like a three-year-old, mm -hmm. four-year-old, right? Hulk smash, da da da. And they and they've talked about that over the years in comic books. You know, Hell is not like that. Hell's like, okay, I've got this body, but I still have all the training that I've got. So where the Hulk is just swinging and he's a savage Hulk and he's just swinging, swinging, right? The three-year-old doesn't know how to fight, but a man trained by the KGB knows hand-to-hand -hand combat. Right. Okay. All right. You go charging at him, he'll drop you with a roundhouse. It's like the average person coming off the street, coming out of a bar, having a couple of beers in them saying, oh, I can take on anyone in the UFC. And then a UFC fighter really show up and go, all right, let's try this. The UFC fighter will drop you with one hand behind his back and not even trying. Because he knows exactly right. where to strike. He, his body's been conditioned a certain way. He's got the physical yep. memory. That And now more radiation to Emil. So he's <laughs> bigger, stronger, and mm -hmm. he has the mindset to understand, manipulate, calculate. He knows, yep. knows when to hold him, knows when to fold him. <laughs> This is this is how dangerous Emil is. Now, I don't think, in my opinion, the movies didn't show that to a certain degree. They almost kind of made them just they're two brutes, let them fight, and it was still a good scene. I'm not taking anything away from it. I think he's more calculating than you know. I don't even think they've written him that calculating in a comic book that in a way. No, not in the comic books. As you can see from you know, as you've seen for these two episodes, you know, issues nine and issue ninety one. But mm. in the movie, I will say you can see how calculating he was when he when he got his first dosage. Yes. When yeah, he got his yes, first yes. dosage, he was still calculating. He had he was able to he had increased speed, increased ability. He had the ability to at least keep up. And you remember, you can hear Thunderbolt like saying, "Oh my God, this might work. This might actually work." Realizing that you know Emil was actually close enough to try and keep up with the Hulk, but then the Hulk, you know. It goes back to that saying that you know the the arm the matter he gets the strong he is at least he's more yes. brute in that sense and it just it's great to be is he's being tactical as possible but that was just this one thing and that was basically his own urge from the movie now now we flip over to the MCU aspect of it is what right. saying I need more power yeah, I need right. more power yes. so yes That's so true. I'm he, not saying yeah I I just think that you know. If, if you know that this guy is strong, that you try to, you know, weaken him at a distance, you kind of bring him. So I think he would observe 100%. more of his weaknesses. 
why try to get him when he's the Hulk? Get him when he's Bruce Banner. I know in the movie they said, "Oh, I want to test my strength to see if I can go one and one." Right, with Hulk. and that that was that was that was annoying. Honestly, that was a little bit annoying. Like you have the, op- the ability evil. to catch him. To exactly, it was definitely unfortunately they you know they gave him that that persona that you know he's going to be you know now that he has strength he has something that he's been missing all his career that can now give him the you know the ability to be the top tier and in the movie you know that he was he was not he was on the plateau slash declining of his career he wasn't right, because he wasn't he, young anymore he's getting he was older. older right so so you realize that's why he that he took that having having the ability or having the, the opportunity to be able to increase his and make him feel young again you know that's when the ego will kick in definitely for sure but i will say that when he was actually abomination fighting in the streets it was a good it was a good toe to toe until you know we can't have we can't have the star player take a full beating you know you know we're not going to get you back for for a second movie so we're gonna let you you're gonna let you get some thumps in there but you're gonna have you're you're gonna have you're gonna have to lose out we'll catch you on the second one we'll catch you in the second one absolutely right. that's fine you know like i said I, I i like the scene i like how the scene played out and all that right i'm just saying mm-hmm. like if you're trained to understand people's psychology they so forth okay you want to test your powers oh and yes he, he, he's still around you can bring him back i think he can get more oh, sinister yeah. he can get more gully he, this he's is more calculating he, he, that's, that's my word I, I don't but like for the hulk this is why the leader when he deals with the hulk you know gets as far as he is he doesn't have the physical attributes but he's of course he's a leader he's got that big brain he's very calculating mm-hmm. i right. think emo can be a lot more calculating like that if you got someone who's whole they've been trained for infiltration espionage interrogation you know where you're a certain level in the military. You know where the secret caches are of certain items because of your clearance. Use that to your advantage. That's that's what I want to put out there. You know what? I just had a quick little thought. Like, like anybody can correct me. Listen, you know, this is my opinion. I just literally thought this right off the top of my head. If we realize that, at least from the movie, the the whole idea of the creation of the gamma. I mean, going for Bruce Banner being, you know, was he basically trying to recreate the super super uh, soldier serum? Right. If we go right. back to the original Captain, you know, the Avenger, the first Avenger. Remember, I can't remember the doctor's name, but the doctor said basically the serum basically enhances, you know, the best traits of you. Type of scenario. Right. That's right. The Red Skull, his best trait was just to be straight evil and, and just to be a, a minical bad man. It's like, yeah. That's gonna hype it up, and, and when he was dying, that you know, he said, "Don't change, you know, stay who you are." So, if we're gonna go with that, uh-huh. I will skip Bruce for a quick second. If we right. go to, if we go to Emil, he was basically a, a strategist. He was a soldier, and it enhanced him as, a, and basically giving him the super soldier aspect of it. He just took too much in, in that regard, but he he was now in between Red Skull. And and Steve Rogers in that yeah, sense. That you're saying. He yes, skills. he had the skills, but he was just a little bit too much ego and just a little, you know, uh, I'm I'm not evil, but I'm just I'm a KGB. I'm a just a, I'm just a spy. I'm espionage. I'm agent, and so I'm on that level. If I go to Hulk now, we all see that he has his big rages and everything like that. But we realize when is Hulk? When in the comics? And even in movies and stuff like that, his compassion is his is one of his bigger things. You know how much Bruce Banner compassion is. You know he he loves Betty. He basically trying to make sure that he's doing this. He wasn't doing this for any type of riches or or gain of fame or anything like that. He was trying to find a way of helping the world. He was just being t- putting his mind to the best of his ability to help mankind. May rage out. But in reality, the core of, or not the core, but a good portion of the Hulk is that he's a very subtle giant, a big giant that basically helps out and help. You know, he's he's it's true. He's as kind. He's as gentle as a, he's gentle with a, with a, with a baby cat if need be, mm-hmm. but able to mm-hmm. break down. You know that type of scenario. So I look at it that 
maybe, not maybe, but you can see that Emil um, Lonsky, his his inner trait, he's honed his skill to be an agent, to be a super soldier in that sense. And basically, it brought the best out of him in that regard. Blonsky, I, I get what say. you're saying. And I, and so a lot of it has to do, so you're saying a lot of it has to do with the person's mentality and how it manifests. Because if I'm, yeah, because if you think about it, along the line, at least out of these these traits, this mm -hmm. is what we're going on of, going off of, you know. So I'm just thinking, well, is that is that a is that a, a common denominator across the board? If I go with the Doctor from Captain America: First Avenger, he made a scene, or he dropped that particular hint that hey, right, this is what um, Red Skull this he he. As powerful as Captain America, but he's on the one side of the spectrum where he is just he's a canine, not a canine, he's a he's a devious, um very uh or an evil one leader of the side. Mr. Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. I'm gonna have that in my head. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, but he was basically head, he's the leader of the science department uh of Hydra. So he was a smart individual and he used it to the best of ability, coming in with futuristic tech and along that line. But he was just an evil guy. Captain America, good hearted on the good side. So I just all I know, I'm going around Makes in circles coming meeting the bush, but that's what I'm thinking along that line. So that's that's something well, that I you know you used me on that because I think and if you look back at anything in the Marvel Universe, be it comic or comic or movies or shows, a lot of it has to manifest in people's perception of themselves right of how that power comes out if they become you know good or evil and how that power shows right when they're good they look a certain way they'll act as i mean they look a certain way their powers come across a certain way when they're bad you see they might get the same equivalent of power but then you know it almost brings out what they're true you know what they see themselves at so the red skull sees himself almost maybe like a demon so he gets the red skin and uh, mm. so forth and it didn't happen to uh, steve rogers Okay, I, I definitely see what you're talking about. Yeah. Right. I definitely see what you're and, talking and, about. And, and seeing that the Gamma, at least we know, at least for the three, the three uh, well, four, uh, well, uh, what, oh my gosh, Rick, Rick did turn into blue, but uh, hmm. uh, my gosh, why did I just went blank? Ah! But Rick Jones, when he turned into um. I'm forget it. Okay, anybody can say it for me right now. I can't remember who who when um when Rick Jones oh, he, he turned in like armadillo or something like that. Yes, yes. But why yeah. can't I think of his name right now? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Holy Toledo Batman, I'm so sorry. Anywho, all you all know who I'm talking all... about. Yes. you all know who I'm talking about. We'll get back there. Like right, 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 right. 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 So I know Rick. Rick and Rick turns into it. So and here's another thing about it. Um, you know, it doesn't seem like I mean. Because let's be real, uh, and how they always write it is a little bit different. They always say gamma radiation is supposed to it's supposed to be the bomb. It's supposed to blow mm -hmm. up, take away, kill people, right? But then how is it a lot of times that when they release gamma radiation, people poke out more than buy more? So mm. let's go to Ancestors 23 and me, not sponsored. <laughs> and think of it this way: is it something in people's DNA that allows them to absorb? radiation and i'm not saying everybody mm -hmm. i'm just saying right everyone has a different ge genetic makeup there could be certain markers in there that let certain people not perish from it but you don't know what you're gonna right. get because right. when you look over the history of the hulk gamma radiate well marvel universe period is everything is radiation cosmic radioactive <laughs> spider gamma it goes on and on and on mm -hmm. but so I know that uh, Jones when some, takes on attributes of the Hulk because I think he gets a blood transfusion. The radiation in the blood doesn't kill him. It turns him into a version of the Hulk. Um, right. These are the characters that it happens to on top of it. I mean, look, even the, the movie where you saw that guy that was helping out Bruce Banner, Mr. Mr. Green, Mr. Blue, he bumps his uh -huh. head, he's bleeding, and then some of Bruce's blood falls into the open wound. And then you yep. see his head start to kind of bubble. We know that character is the leader. He yeah. becomes that's who it was supposed to be in the movie. They're bringing in the leader, and they never continued it. Uh, so maybe, and maybe the leaders out there 
but he's underground, right? Just because we haven't seen him doesn't mean he's not there. We 100%. saw his origin. We saw him bump his head. He's sitting there and he starts to smile. And he's like, oh, yeah. And you see the thoughts starting to happen. You know the character's name. The, that's the leader's name. Is the you know, So mm-hmm. that's possibility. But well, once again, if we look at it, just the MCU part of it, we see roughly there's one, two, three, four people that I can call it right now that have survived gamma radiation, if it's explosion, poisoning, yep. exposure. Let's just put it that way, exposure. Yeah. So two of them definitely make sense to me because they're mm-hmm. family. But right. the other two, there's no relation. So how come they weren't killed off by it and it mutated them? So that's my point. Now, how many people have that gene out there? We don't know. It, has they ever even looked to see if there's a gene? I don't think anyone's actually had that kind of thought, right? Well, you, you know, if if we're going to go to, if we're going to flip over to the MCU aspect of it, mm-hmm. Bruce was the first one. Yeah. But everybody else was basically, basically derived from his blood. Everybody yep. got, everyone was derived from his blood. So this is probably the reason why they were able to survive it. Because they're not really taking on a full concentration. True. So, so it could, it just altering them at a molecular level, of course, and just changing them into, to that. Because if we go down. Hmm? The variants. <laughs> not TVA variants, just variants, like a variant. Mm, um, right. Right, nice. right. Right. So I, uh, I see what you're saying. But then in the comic book, you know, clearly, mm-hmm. as we're talking about our abomination, he takes a full blast of concentrated 100%. radiation. Right. You know, I, when he does it, I'm almost having that flashback of when you have the TV show of Bruce Banner, uh, you know, the Incredible Hulk yeah. TV show. With, okay. Uh, yeah. You know, where he's always being chased by McGee. And, and, you know, and you see him in the chair and the chair leans back. Right? And then he just, you know, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Bruce Ringo playing the Hulk. Yeah, exactly. Bill Bixby. I have right. visions of Bill Bixby just kind of in the chair and he bombards himself with radiation, radiation right? Because it's not a blast. It's not an explosion or a bomb. He, right. he does it. So Emo does it to himself. It's a higher dose. Right. He survives. It mutates him. Here we are. That's the abomination. Right. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something right now. Myself, personally, when I saw the abomination was coming into the MCU, I was very right. happy. Right when he was in the Hulk movies, very happy. I was like, "Oh, sweet, we got ourselves a good villain." And then this Easter egg was the leader. I'm like, "This, this could be set up for such a great third movie, right?" You know, he had Eric Bana play him first, Edward Norton played him second. Right. There was some friction how Eric Edward Norton was on set with whoever. It just there was going to be no it didn't work out. Two. It didn't pan out, unfortunately. It didn't pan out. Uh, but the third one was really there to show the leader and still can bring mm-hmm. him in. Yeah. Now, hundred percent. Right, so that one, I'm like, okay, he's he's there. He's got the super soldier serum in him, along with uh, Bruce Banner's blood. That's the abomination in the MCU. I would still like to see the classic Emil Blonsky hit the well, screen. Well, you see, spy. That's, that's spy. But this is where we now, if we're, you know, let's 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 flip over to the MC version of him right now. After after all the the situation with hulk in harlem as it was nice that that was mentioned in the you know in the recent mcu yeah the terror yeah that, the terror in harlem harlem yeah the, exactly so it's great that we're able to help make that connection you know we're covering we're, we're accustomed to seeing certain characters from that version into the mcu that's great but to see what you wanted to see it was a very 180 when the abomination returns in she hawk you know attorney at law and we have him as a very uh, peaceful tranquil individual who is you know which is great again like you know if people are having you know if people are having you know you know situations where they need someone to talk to and just you know need a way to you know express not not saying express himself but able to go you know to go through the process it shows emil went through the process and now we have a 180 of what we expected so i will fully admit when he came on the screen 
and you see him there just like, how you doing? Tranquil. That's it? You're, you're in human form? Oh, okay, cool. How did you do that? Oh, I could just change at will. Oh. Oh, okay, cool. Again, that's another that's another piece of joke that I love later on when Brutus realized, wait, everybody changing but me? How, how come how come I'm still trying to figure this out? Which is hilarious, you know, without him. Just trying to figure it out. You're the genius. Yeah. And, and that's and that's what it is, right? So I know in the movie, the movie is a TV show. So I mean, you know, you see him in Shang-Chi and Ten Rings. He's in there with yeah. Wong. Quick scene, he's fighting, whatever. Okay, he's teaching him how to fight. And they're you know, they're just sparring. And he goes mm. on his business. You see him later on, he figures out how to change. Now, in the comic book, they said the change was permanent. He could not change back to Correct. human form. Correct. Okay. Uh, in the in the comic book, they mention his wife, and he goes and he kidnaps his wife. Now, also in the comic book, he wasn't a nice man. He he used to physically abuse his wife. Like, in front mm-hmm. of his, his superiors, he was a model soldier, but at home, he would, uh, you know, domestic, you know, uh, violence, he would abuse his wife, right? Mm -hmm. So they're setting up, you know, he's that type of person. Once again, this is back in 1967. If people were to go back and read that issue now, I think it would it would hit a lot more of oh my gosh, right? In 1967, you know, domestic violence, mental health, those things weren't labeled as I said before. Now, I mean, they were always there, but now there's such a spotlight on them that right everyone's gonna go back and go holy crap. Yeah, you guys, this is what you guys wrote, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just going to be, oh, it's not all haha punch, you know. It, it, it's a lot more. There's a lot more psychology uh, behind it. Well, and remember that's so, that's Stan. That's Stan. He said it when when the world of Spider Man, and he wanted to make the characters very realistic. Let them go mm-hmm. through actual situations, real life, you know, real life situations to relate and. If we're if you know he's having he's having an individual who is basically very uh soldier and everything like that, just the pressures of trying to, you know, back in those days, basically you're just trying to be the top tier as best as possible and you're super focused and you have no way of properly communicating with your family. And these are like you said, all all the situation the criteria that we're accustomed to seeing and hearing now actually have a different type of label or a different type of uh, category so you could better understand how to approach and how to work with it back in the days it was all just there's nothing wrong with me but you would carry on in a particular matter that wasn't properly that wasn't proper at all no, so exactly it, it was it was it's it's always interesting, like you said, to sometime when you go back and you read certain material from back in the days, like that that actually passed. They 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 even let that go. Like no one's no one's no one's talking on someone's door. Wow. But you realize it's a different time. But again, Blowski, you know, he just basically, like Mario was saying, that he was just uh back to the point in the sense of like, you know. Actually, let me go back to the point. You were thinking about the point that he doesn't change. Like he was always in form that he doesn't wasn't able to change like the human form. Like, yeah. Change his form, anything like that. Yeah. And, and that's what yeah, I, I thought was interesting. So, I mean, and that also adds to his mental stresses of the character. Um, right. and, and he goes a, about it. So he, here's here's this. I know you had a, another point to bring up. So I'll say that by yeah. this point real quick. So what I thought was amazing is they had all these characters. So you're going back there, 1967, Cold War. Uh, you know, uh, Russia was seen a, Germ- a certain way. Germany was seen a certain way. Now, we, uh, you know, we we talked about it before. Um, the comic book called the uh, uh, what was it Soviet Super Soldiers. It was a one shot comic book that came out. I mm. I thought it was a lot. It was really cool. And it was like you know seeing all the heroes because there's a lot more heroes and villains over from Russia. That maybe you people realize, and they put them all in, well, most of them in one book. If Russia was supposed to be the, the superpower, the big bad power at the time, fighting with North America or the US, I'm surprised that they didn't try to write more the anti Avengers, mm-hmm. the, you know, fueled by the government, because a lot of them were there, you know. So I'm talking, you have, for example, um, they have the equivalent of the Hulk which is right. the abomination. 
Right. Did you have um, what was Crimson, it? Di- uh, Dino. Crimson Dynamo? Dynamo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Crimson Dynamo is another one. Uh, Titanium, no, Titanium Man was German. So Crimson Dynamo, right, was right. Russian. Uh, the Abomination is Russian, right? So that's your Iron Man right now. That's your Hulk right now. They had, um, uh, another, was it Red Guardian, I think it was, if I have the name right, uh, who was like their version of Captain America? Uh, yes. Um, or is his name? Yeah, Red Guardian, Red Guardian. Yep. Right. So Red Absolutely Guardian. Right. So, you know, you have them. And then, of course, they had their own mutants that were there. So it was three mutants. So it was Dark Star. It was USSR mm-hmm. Major. Mm-hmm. Transforms into a giant bear, and, mm-hmm. and they call themselves Vanguard. The Vanguard. And Vanguard, they have Vanguard yep. right? Exactly. So he, that's your equivalent, almost of Thor, but they're also mutants. So that, that, they had their own team that could have followed, and they were all under Soviet control. Like, you know, they they all reported to the the government, to the military, right? And that would have been, hey, the Avengers are coming this way. I want you guys to go over there and undermine them doing X, Y, and Z. Don't worry, we'll back you. It's a Black Ops mission. There is a lot of intelligence and skills along that team of the people I just mentioned, but the Abomination could have been on there. And they should have gone more, in my opinion, head-to-head with the Avengers at times or other superhero groups. As soon as they leave North American soil, you know, so to speak, right? Because Russia's always looking to see what America's doing and vice versa. This is something that's been going on even up to this day and age. I thought that some writing that should happen and I, that would have been an interesting dynamic because mm-hmm. all the time, the abomination doesn't really team up with them with anybody. He always tries to take on the Hulk by himself. If he does, he teams up with the gremlin, you know, uh, because he's another Russian person uh, or Quasimodo. Uh, so you had gremlin, you had Quasimodo. And then, you, and, and then sometimes, you know, the leader, but the leader is North American, right? But there's times where they could have done it. And I think those storylines would have been epic. I mean, G.I. Joe has to deal with the October Guard. Okay. Go, Ivan. <laughs> Just mm-hmm. that's, it's hilarious. So, here you go. So, I know you had a point about She-Hulk. And I, I want you to kind of get into well, that before we move on to anything else here. So, the, let's see if I remember it right now. So, the point I was kind of trying to bring up is that seeing that She-Hulk herself I, I guess I'll go back to saying when I said referring to the characteristics along that line, the point of She Hulk with a oh lord, where not? I just went lost. You're but talking I, about I was, exposure. You, you so you made real quick. Uh, uh, so so before we started, I want to jog his memory. So you're talking about different levels of exposure of gamma radiation to different people re- yes. in retaining intelligence. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There. There it is. So, what was quite interesting is that since everybody, every, the three people, so the leader, if we're going to go to the MCU aspect of it, or right. even then, the um, leader, Abomination, and Jennifer Walter, his cousin, all were exposed to Bruce Banner's blood. Mm. To me, the level of, it, it just seemed like because of their the, the amount of, they weren't hit with a full if we go to MCU aspect of it, because yes, yes. the comic, bo- I mean, the comic books are saying that, you know, Emil was hit with a bang of um, radiation. The other two, the other two weren't. Uh, but if we go to MCU aspect of it, they all were, they were all induced or basically were able to get drips or being um, affected by Bruce Banner's uh, blood. To me, I think that basically by not having a full doses of radiation, this helped basically gave them the ability to transform and trans, you know, basically change into a Hulk, a Hulk in that regard. Were able to keep th- keep their mind and keep their keep their intelligence in- at bay, not at bay at, at the same time. So I believe that that's a, that's a point that you I never really thought of until we're actually having this conversation about the abomination that the the doses of blood transfer that have been given to each of these individuals because it wasn't a, a major sufficient amount that they were able to keep you know keep their intelligence and keep their mind insane keep their mind intact i should say or insane they weren't insane right right right, right that's so interesting yeah, i will okay. i would like to see i would like to see that if they decide to bring in another character 
with a, a now another gamma rated type of character. So right now we know that, you know, we mentioned the name Rick Jones is part of the Hulk lore. Yeah. We, we need to have a movie where we can start introducing that character in there. And then maybe a following movie afterwards, something happens where is he going to get bombarded or is going to be like the, like the card, like the comic book that he's going to get a blood transfusion. And then Bruce actually put two and two together, realizing that at that point, hopefully the leader will make an appearance. Cause then you can start thinking like each individual had a touch of my blood. That's the factor. And hence you see the reason why at the end or in the beginning of She-Hulk, Bruce Banner made sure that anytime his blood was exposed, he made sure to incinerate that as soon as possible because he understood the power of his blood being out there. But okay, he's just making that. But does he fully understand that a transfusion of his blood gives them the power of a Hulk, but also able to able for that individual to retain the intelligence of their own it's never been mentioned but i'm wondering if it's actually been there within the hulk lord mcu hulk lore and it just hasn't been brought out yet interesting it, and see that's really interesting because and now and, and that's the other thing part of it right because you were mentioning that and when i was thinking about it so i know in the, in the comic book the abomination takes more gamma radiation than bruce banner did but he still retains his intelligence so I don't know if that's more an attribute to uh, animal or maybe Bruce didn't get enough radiation. Like, you know what I mean? If you have your, your right. red zone and green zone, so to speak. So if you're right. between, let's, let's put it on there. You got numbers one to 10. Mm -hmm. If you take anything from, let's say zero to four, or so, let's put it. Yeah. So zero yeah. to four. I see where you're going. Completely. Right. That's, that's bad radiation. So what happened? You might have a defect and so forth. If you take it right. from five, five. to seven, mm -hmm. it's the sweet spot. And if right. you take it more than that, like eight to 10, once again, eh, roll the dice. Right. Did Bruce, you know, did Bruce take too low of a, ra a dose of radiation? And when Emil took it more, it, he was in the sweet spot. So it right. fully mutated him properly. Right. Like maybe the Hulk wasn't fully mutated. He's got the strength, but to retain the intelligence, it's like if he if he was exposed to a higher dosage or a little bit longer, he might right. have retained his intelligence and not develop another personality because Emil took a higher dose. Right. He retained his personality because and then to your point, the leader got a different diluted dose. So this is why he didn't get the strength, but he got the intelligence and right. uh, and things that went along with that. And of course, his cousin has the similar genetic makeup in the comic book I'm talking, and she got right. blood transfusion. Okay, so that's it. The only person that I'm not sure of is when Rick got exposed at, originally, he became and he took on the attributes of the Hulk. Is, I don't, I think, I'm not, I can't remember if he was exposed to it somehow or, you know, but I think they said something that he was sent to, he was with around the Hulk so often that he was yes. slowly getting like a little bit of resistance. So when he finally got exposed to it, you know, but he went total. He didn't retain his intelligence. Rick Jones totally hulked out. Like he didn't take on another personality. He was just okay. rage, just pure anger all the time. He didn't talk really or very limited. He just went out there and raged. <laughs> so those are my theories. Hmm. So we're, we're getting to this point here. So I know that this character has been fast already, but I still want to do it our way. One hundred percent. Right? I still want to do it our way. So here, here's, and, and I know this is, so take it with a clean slate. I know the MCU you could say this is the abomination in another universe. Here we go. Right now we know about the multiverse. We've got one here that's dealing with our current Hulk in a very depowered state. I want to see the Hulk powered back up, bring in the Pantheon. I'd love to see that, but let's go. So if I had to do the abomination my way, I would really lean hard into him being part of a shadow government operation with Russia, lean really hard into his set of skills of him being a spy and everything that goes along with being a KGB agent at the time. Coming over here to North American soil, trying to do some sabotage. You know, so I mean, the Hulk's already been established. He's already out there. Now, mm -hmm. you know, Russia doesn't want someone that can lift over 100 tons running free and not under their control. They need their own. 
This is why they make the, a very simple decision. They make their own to find out how this happened. Oh, there's a place called Gamma Base. Folks always in New Mexico around Gamma Base. All right, Emil, go to Gamma Base, figure it out. Bring us back some information. So the setup is pretty easy, but I think it should be done more as a spy thriller. And I, when I say spy thriller, I don't mean like you're James Bond. I'm talking more your Mission Impossible. Like you don't know who to trust, who's going on, who's doing what, right? It's mm-hmm. a lot of sleight of hand. And that's, that's where I wanted to kind of feel like to get that tense of him being a spy until you make that, Easter egg guest appearance of Hoover's playing Bruce Banner to come in there and go through the role to say, that's it. I've had enough because even when Mark Ruffalo was doing the character, he does mention it in the very first Avengers movie saying, Hey, I I had enough one point. I I put a, you know, uh, a pistol in my mouth and tried to end it. And you know what happened? And the fuck was there talking. He's like, what? He goes, I spit out the bullets. Like, I, I don't think I can die. I spit out the bullets. So it shows you that he went through the action, but he also turned into the Hulk that same moment, healed, and then turned back. And he's like, all right. So he, he, that frame of mind is there mm-hmm. with the character already. And it's already established in the MCU that he does have his lows. He has had had his lows. I would like to see that whole scene play out with the Abomination, getting the radiation, turning into it, but really going into him being a villain. I mean, first of all, you got the strength, the speed, regenerating, shin powers, impervious, you can breathe underwater. Okay, and, and other radiation doesn't affect you the way it'll affect other people. And you have all the capabilities of that, being KGB trained and loyal to Mother Russia, I was going to say at the time. Yeah, Gamma Base should not really be standing. He, You should see him like planting bombs and making what you call in the army a kill zone where you set up places like, okay, I know I'm going to lure, him, lure the Hulk here or soldiers to follow me to this point. When they see me here, they're going to charge me. I'm going to set off this detonation, block them out, kill people here. It should be that calculated. So if it's a Hulk and him, that got to go one-on-one, that's it. And with the fact of the first time he fought the Hulk, he won. He got away with the fight, All right? Well, if Russia realizes what's going on, let them turn around and send somebody. Say, hey, we're gonna send over a jet and pick you up. All right. Remember, you're loyal to you're loyal to Russia and let them bring them back. That would I would start a whole series of events. So that's how I'm looking at that. Mm. What I now now because it's got to be abomination focused, I know it's not gonna be a movie, but there's nothing doing something like a extended episode streaming service on Disney Plus. Right. Right. Even if it's four episodes three episodes on Disney plus dealing with that. They dealt with it somewhat with the abomination. So him being the peaceful, loving, almost having a cult with all she Hulk's villains. That was cool, but that's not the abomination. I want to see not to say that everyone's got to be ruthless. I'm not saying they can't change, but making them that way right now. I think we missed a lot of the storyline and possible introductions of other characters. I agree. And I feel that, Mm -hmm. The Abomination was was a great IP that they brought in for the Hulk. They basically, with the decision how, you know, the whole studios went back in the days, you know, how everything was isolated and separated and so forth. Right. I feel that the Abomination is basically still in the MCU because in reality, it's, I'm happy that he's, I'm happy that they brought him back. Why did they bring him back? And they, and again, they just put him like more on a hush mode in regards with with uh we need to keep him still in people's minds so we're bringing the she hulk you know hulk related let's you know let's have her interact with him and just keep keep them together you know at least in still people's mind like, again we're talking about it talk about the she hulk and you can't talk about the she hulk um series without talking about abomination that's what True. they wanted True. so i feel that is great that they've done that at least to keep him, keep him on the shelf right there every week. Just come by and just you know, you know, use a feather duster and get the dust off of him. Just keep him there. Just we're gonna use you just now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now that he's gone, so peace and everything along that line. Perfect time for a certain person to make an appearance back from the other the other movie, who was on the floor smiling as he was getting blood dripped into him. Come back and the same. You know you're you know you're wasting your talents. You know that. Well, what what? Yeah, yeah. I'm, listen, I'm a peaceful guy right now. I don't do that. 
I'm a nice guy. Listen, I got my I got my little I got my house. I got my people. It's all right. No, no, no. I got plans for you. And by genetically, because the leader is a very smart individual. If you didn't catch what I was talking about, I was talking about the leader. Let's reintroduce the leader back into yes. this. To me, it yes. would be a great time that when they decide to go with a solo, because we know, I don't know the, the specifics, but I know there are legal holdings on why the Hulk can't have a standalone movie as yet. I think there's a time threshold that we have to wait. And that's why at least he can still appear in other movies with other people by you know but he can't be the hulk by himself right i believe there's a certain time i can't remember anybody remembers please put it in the chat and you know let me know just remind me but i believe there's a time where the expiry date on that is done the day that is done lights up action you start rolling out a movie get the script and everything right out you basically have the hulk chilling taking it easy Emil is chilling and easy, and all you see is this dark figure who's plotting a plan to bring back the abomination. Not Emil. We're bringing back the abomination. And basically have those two go against the Hulk. And then that will basically be it. So I feel it's more or less the Emil is now just is just playing the possum aspect of it. Unknown to him, he's basically trying to, you know redemption for all the stuff he's done no problem he said it he made it they made it very clear in the she-hulk he's trying to be redemption he's trying to live the good life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i feel unbeknownst to him someone's planning to just take you and just like say no i got plans for you let's go for a walk and basically put him in a position where he basically gets back to be an abomination, put him back where he starts to feel that you were a great soldier. You still are a great soldier. You just don't have a mission. Let me give you a mission. Starts turning into leaders start turning into the um to fury. You find you trying to list me, sir? You trying to put me back in? Yes, I do. To do what? Yeah. To save the world. Now? What are you putting back in? We're about we're about to take over the world. I, I got no time for that. Here's the reason why you will willingly come and work with me. And the leader, again, he plays chess. He playing, he's playing Vulcan's chess. Yeah, 20 exactly. steps ahead. You don't know why. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I guess it makes sense, not knowing that he's bringing you back into a path, and then that's it. So to me, because I've always, when I watch the show, She-Hulk, I have always like, why? Is he still being very? It's just like nah. There, there, there has to be a reason why we comic that. relief, but that was the writing of She Hulk, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. That's no, no, that's no. the tone of She Hulk. She Hulk was very uh, comic comedic at one point, breaking the fourth wall. But yeah, why so. do we bring Abomination? Why can we like again within the first first episode? She's fighting Titania, and Titania comes back later on, whatever the case it be. But why are we bringing back Emil? Like it made a nice sense, a dynamic of saying that you know. I can't take this case because, you know, I'm a conflict because of what he did to my cousin. Bruce, like, I forgave him and blah, blah, blah. That's great. But why is Emil still here? I, it never made any sense. My thoughts is the studio wants to make sure that he is still within reach. So just in case, if you forgot the two, remember, in that movie, there were three. There were two main people, Hulk and Abomination. And at the very end, the very end, and Leader. all you see is a third person just come up. Thank you for coming out, everybody. Uh, we'll uh, we'll see you again next time. W was that the so true? What? What is that? And only those like us will know. Like, <laughs> there it is. There, there it go. is. There it is. There, there it is. is. But we don't see nothing afterwards because the leader is known to not be seen. The leader is known to not be seen. That's right. He is that big, is absolutely he is like, right. He is literally like the great puppeteer in the sense, all the action in the back of the hands. Hey, because hey, hey, again, he knows he's not physically strong. I just got to pay manipulative to get stuff done. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, I, I wasn't there. I wasn't there. You can't prove I was there. It wasn't me. <laughs> the leader is shaggy. It wasn't me. I'm about to say. 
Was it me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Got you planning in the corner. Was it hundred percent? Hundred percent. So it will got be... you planning in the kitchen. Was it me? Was it me? Got you planning in the at gamma base. Was it me? Was it me? I'm was it me? telling you, it will be now. I am. Now I have to start. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm putting a mission for everybody. Let's have some fun Uh-oh. with this. Okay. I want people, those who are who 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 live by the MC code and you MCU code, start rethinking and start watching it again. Let's see if there's a connection for the leader. Because why not? There could be stuff back there that is gonna be hilarious that I hope they bring the leader in. And when they do. He starts saying, you mean that was you? You mean we're now saying that was you? (laughs) That was you? And then we start. (laughs) Then it turns into Agatha. uh, uh, Oh, my God. Agatha from. um, WandaVision? Yes. When 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 we reveal that she's actually behind it. It was oh, Agatha yeah, yeah, all yeah, along. Yeah, yeah. It was Agatha all along, which was when that when that line came out, that, that song came out, I was eternally dying with laughter. I'm like, oh, you guys are. And they did that, they did that with that. So, and Agatha was just using, you know, witchcraft to to you know manipulate people and all that kind of stuff, you know, right. chaotic, chaotic magic and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, the leader's yeah, supposed yeah, to be yeah, yeah. like he's supposed to be stock level. I mean, That's stock right. level thinking. He could have been setting stuff up from time. I want to know. Ladies and gentlemen, Disney, Marvel, get it done. Start implementing. If you haven't done it, I hope in the next phase, what are we in phase seven now? Are we going to phase seven, I think? I think we're going to phase six, is it? Phase 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 six? six? Phase six or phase seven? Whichever phase we're going into right now, Marvel, start penciling this stuff in the background. You want to see, you want it, you want to get the next wave of MCUers, if that's a word, <laughs> to start focusing. <laughs> it, is now. it is now. The same way we were focusing on the first one, we started to see the little Easter eggs and all that kind of stuff. This it. You're making the new, you're making the new Avengers. You're making the young Avengers. You start you're starting to work on certain things right now. So start start just putting in the small little layers. Put some leader yeah. Easter eggs. Why not? It, it to me it could no, definitely make sense. Huh? To me, it, it literally awesome. has an opportunity. It can, it can make sense right now. This is this is an opportunity that could be put into play. And I would really love it that it actually does. And we start to figure that out. That'd be perfect. As I said, shut up and take my money. I, I, I'm, I'm all in because I would love to see the leader come in there. And I'd love to see the abomination more in a certain way. So um, clearly you can tell it. I'm going more of a live action thing. You know, with the abomination, mm-hmm. but I would it does abomination need his own movie? No, but I think if you dive no. more into his him as a person, it's still interesting because you would get a different aspect of this character. It's not just gonna be like heroes or, or villains right up there punching and all that. You're gonna get the whole thing of him being a spy, and I think that's even more um interesting to a certain that's- degree until you get to that level and he uses that to his advantage. So I would yeah. love to see that. I would love that- to see that. And and yourself, you want to continue what they're seeing. I want to MCU. continue, but it's but it can easily loop back to what you're doing. Yeah, Cause, okay. Because 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 that's really what it is. Let let's let's continue from where we are right now. We're at where he's at the retreat and everything along that line. But let's have something that actually basically not triggers him, but put him back on the path to become the, the abomination. Because that's really what it is. That's that's what we want. Because we're realizing that particular character. If we're gonna we're gonna go every if I'm really gonna if I'm gonna really map it out, mm-hmm. w- walk with me, everyone, for a second. Cap had Red Skull, Iron Man had Sebastian Shaw had um um no Abadiah Stain, uh, Abadiah Stain. Sorry, yes, yes. And he he basically um Thor had Loki and you know anti Loki and all that kind of jazz. Right now. Yes. But then Hulk was supposed to be, you know, the next tier, you know, you know, of the top, like, you know, like the founding fathers kind of scenario. He doesn't have anybody. Why are we not building up towards that? We had somebody. We made him, you know, he's now been portrayed as being very 
relax, whatever the case may be. But our child the Hulk need right, but his inner child. But the Hulk does need to have an adversary. We have him. I think it's time to just basically poke the bear, get him back up and running, and get him back in. Because at that point, who else is who else is there on the team? You know, you know what I mean. Even um, I get it. Even Bucky, even Bucky per se. All those, it's Bucky has. Um, oh, why am I really? People, if you understand, <laughs> names are it's there. So Bucky, Bucky was you know partly Red Skull. Bucky was partly um, no, but you know, so Iron Man. And, 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 no, but but in the Black winter, Panther. winter. No, 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 but no, Bucky, Bucky. I'm just saying, even Bucky has his own adversary and um, Winter Soldier. And I'm right, sorry, right, yes, and um, and um, Cap, and um, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yes, it's, Flight Smasher. Um, well, that was it. But actually, the um, Sorcery Z, Zor, Z oh, why? Zemo. Baron Thank Zemo. you. Bloody hell. Excuse me. Every single time. It gets me so freaking annoyed. But you he had need, Baron. You have more Ginkgo Biloba. <laughs> you know, I think I need a double dose tomorrow. Our nation. Um, But yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Everybody has, but your, your, your top tier guy doesn't have one. No one can come out the it top of their sense. dome. We're He's missing, there. It's a missing link. It's the it's missing, missing link. link. I don't mean the toy. The link's there, but no one wants... Like, you're purposely... The, Disney is purposely trying to bamboozle us and make us feel that he, he, the Hulk doesn't have an adversary. He's right there. He's, He's right there. Enough. He's not enough. They just haven't made the screen. Okay, so hold on now. So now I'm going to ask you. So I usually we get to our fan mm -hmm. casting part of this show. Mm -hmm. Are you who would you fan cast, or would you just stay with the original guy? I mean, with the I, way your your vision is. My vision, I'll stay with I'll stay with the original guy. Like I'll, okay. I'll stay with the original guy because I want I want him to not say redeem himself, but I just know that character is right there. He's already MCU. There's no need to, unless God forbid something happens to him in in real real life. I would say let him be there because to me he. Is so key to being. It will be the the greatest. Um, we'll pull everybody, you know, over everybody if the we're reveal. actually able to get the reveal. If he basically is to be the abomination again, let's get back to let's get back to this character. Let's get back to this actor and play this again and just play like, oh my gosh, I never saw that coming. Yeah, that was the whole that was the whole reason. But I'm I'm telling you, I'm. It will really irk me. If in the next five years, if they do, if they don't do this or make some kind of inkling towards that, it will really like burn me. If like you guys had yeah, it right, grind there. rods gears. Right well, now we know. Now we know. <laughs> okay, so see, for you, you're keeping with the original person. I myself, depending on the storyline we're going to tell, I would still stay with the original actor. But but mm. if I had to turn around and make my pick for one, I would go for one actor, and his name is Vladimir uh, Mashkov. So he's a Russian actor. He played the Russian agent in uh, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. So the Mission Impossible movie Ghost Protocol, he plays uh, a Russian agent in there uh, trying to kill off Tom Cruise, Russian intelligence officer. There we go. So Vladimir uh, Mashkov, that's who I would go for to Adolf. You know, we had to kind of do a little bit of a reboot. I hate reboots, so let's say recasting, depending on what they mm -hmm. want to do with because he's got that look to me. I think he can get in there. Uh, you can see him in the uniform. That's who I'm going with. That's that's it. Outside of it. Okay. I really wanted to get back to like original Russian roots. That's that's my, my basis of there uh, with mm -hmm. this character. So okay. that, that is who I'm going with. So okay. we know what grinds your gears, Rod. Any last words before we wrap up this show? Uh, get it done. No. Um, Three. <laughs> Marvel, get it done. No, it's it's like like we're saying, this character's IP has, as we always say, we should have a tear yeah. meat on the bone, man. There's there's enough meat on the bone for for Abomination to be a recurring individual in the MCU. Yes. He's becoming a return a recurring one, which is great, but we're not using to the full potential that he should be. So no. As long as we can, as long as we can focus and get that going, to me, honestly, would be a, a great aspect to uh, to bring people in. And 
I'm just trying to think honestly, just before I go, uh -huh. do we is there there minus low key? There are no reoccurring villains that goes and comes back. That because I can the MCU think is of. written differently than comic books, so it right. never really kind of gets into that. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. So this would be the first time. That's what I'm saying. Like minus yeah. Loki, but Loki is he's now gone like more anti-hero, right? So he's not. You wouldn't right. consider him a villain anymore. Right. So so, so it would be great if we can bring him back. Bring bring. Uh, bring back uh, the abomination, so he can be now the first reoccurring villain, and just put him back up against the Hulk, because it has to happen. If if our heroes can always fight battles, win, and come back to fight another day, why can't a villain? I mean, our heroes, our heroes can fight, win, and come back another day. Why can't the Why can't the villains, even if they get caught? I I believe there's they they got they should be able to get out in comic books. They're able to escape. So why not in real life? Just the exactly. pause, the plausible that can get out. Yeah, exactly. I agree habit. with you on that one. Hallelujah. Preach, Rob, yeah. preach. I hear you. <laughs> so here we go. We're, we're at the end of our episode, everybody. Thank you so much once again for tuning in. Rod's going deep on this one. And we I'm I am with you 100 percent on that one, cuz for sure. You're going deep. <laughs> can you dig it? We can dig it. Can dig you it. dig oh it? My. Okay. Uh so remember, like, subscribe, rate, review, link, share, let us know and, and you know and what you think about the show and uh, put your comments down below. We always answer. And remember, this whole world was created by a pencil, a piece of paper, and lots of imagination. Keep on dreaming. All right, we're out. Yeah, I now forgot to mention that the guy got jelly. gills, you know. Uh, huh? What's that? What, so I'm going to go get myself some green jelly. Green jello. Some green jelly. Okay, Green jello. Do All right, cool. I forgot he has gills. He has gills, people. He can bring on the water. Come out. <laughs> Under the sea. Okay, I'm not going to get into it. All right, we're <laughs>